Hello guys, welcome back to GPU Tester. Today we're going to be benchmarking the GTX 1066 GB. I have the MSI Gaming X variant of the card. And you can see the specifications of the card on the screen. You can also see the specifications of the test bench I'll be using to benchmark this graphics card. First game we have on the list is Spider-Man Miles Morales. We're gonna be playing at 1080p using the high quality preset. In Miles Morales, the average FPS we get is 44 and the 1% lows and 0.1% lows are 23 and 19 respectively, which is a little uh, surprising considering it does really well in Spider-Man, which is based on the same engine and it mostly has the same map as well. The one person lows are pretty annoying when you do face them. So I don't know if, if you're sensitive to stutters then maybe this is not the right way to play the game. But if you're someone who is okay with a stutter or two here and there, then maybe this won't affect you as much. Next game on the list is The Last of Us Part 1. We're gonna be playing at 1080p using the medium quality settings. And at 1080p medium quality we get an average FPS of 29 which is I'd say below what you would say is a decent experience because because I believe an average FPS of lower than 30 means the game is unplayable. But again, that can be personal preference and you may be able to play games that drop down to 25 or something. So there's that. Uh, the 1% person lows and 0.1% person lows are 27 and 26. So it doesn't drop much, but it doesn't really have a high base frame rate to begin with. Next game on the list is Uncharted The Lost Legacy. We are playing at 1080p using the medium quality settings. We get an average FPS of 43 but the game is not playable at all. And that's because we are running out of VRAM and when you run out of VRAM there are a lot of stutters and the 1060 falls prey to that. Uncharted stutters way too much to be playable and if I had a 1060 I wouldn't bother buying this game. What the hell was that back there? Messy but effective. You were going to sell me out weren't you? It's called improvisation. God, who's being unprofessional now? What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means you let Asav get the jump on us. I'm starting to wonder whether you're worth the 50%. I knew it. Next game on the list is Uncharted 4. In Uncharted 4, the average FPS and the one person lows are pretty decent at 55 and 44 respectively. And the point one person lows not so much. It is bearable, I wouldn't say it's unplayable at all. It is definitely playable, it is enjoyable, but it does stutter, so keep that in mind. Really? Hang on! Alright! See that truck get past that! Next game on the list is The Witcher 3. We are playing at 1080p using the low settings. Also keep in mind that we are using the next gen update which does look better but also is more GPU demanding. In terms of averages we get 
36 FPS on average and the 1% lows come in at 31. The 0.1% lows come in at 26 and overall it's a decent experience. You can lock it to 30 for a more smoother and consistent experience. If you have a 1060 and you don't mind playing at 30 FPS, then I think you should be able to enjoy this game quite a bit. Also, this game uses only 3 GB of VRAM, so you should not run into any bottleneck there. Next game on the list is Red Dead Redemption 2. We're playing at 1080p using the medium quality settings. In Red Dead Redemption 2, you get an average FPS of 54 with 1% lows and 0.1% lows coming in at an impressive 47 and 45 respectively. This game actually runs really well on older hardware and the 1060 is no exception. You can maybe lower down the settings to get 60 plus FPS, but I think in a game that has slow pacing like RDR2, you don't need 60 FPS to enjoy it. Next game we have is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We're playing at 1080p and we're using the medium quality settings. Valhalla is one more game which I think is really well optimized for how good it looks. And we get an average FPS of 61 with 1% lows coming in at 32 and 0.1% lows coming in at 28. The 1% and 0.1% lows are not as impressive as the average but I don't think they will stop you from having fun while playing this game as the game only drops when you move into a new area while you're running around it doesn't really have any stutters and the 1% lows and 0.1% lows will not drop Next game we're going to be testing is GTA 5 and I'm expecting this to run really well on the 1060. We're going to be playing this at 1080p using the very high settings and as I thought this game runs really well on the 1060. Although it is a bit of an older title, the 1060 still delivers impressive performance and it gets an average of 99 FPS. The 1% lows come in at 58 and the 0.1% lows come in at 57. Overall the game runs smooth and you can definitely enjoy it. Next game we're going to be running is Doom Eternal. We're going to be running this at 1080p using the ultra settings. In terms of FPS, we get an average of 70 with 1% lows and 0.1% lows coming in at 59 and 53 respectively. All overall, the 1060 runs this game pretty well, but I don't know, I feel like I was expecting more from this game considering how well it runs on other gpus maybe i'm just maybe i'm just too spoiled or something <laughs> but uh, yeah it still runs really well
Next game we have on the list is Horizon Zero Dawn and we are running this game at high settings 1080p. And uh, although our VRAM is not maxed out, we still have almost a gig left in the bank. The game does stutter every now and then and I wonder why that is. Maybe it's when we move to a different area or something but overall the experience isn't bad and we get an average FPS of 46. The 1% lows come in at 28 and the 0.1% lows come in at 12. Got one. Next game we have is the finals. We'll be running it at 1080p using the low settings. In terms of FPS, we get an average FPS of 80 with 1% lows and 0.1% lows coming at 56 and 53 respectively. Overall the game runs fine and uh, although there are dips below 60 which are not desirable in an esports title, I think if you really wanna play this game, you can give it a try. Again, it's a free game, so you might as well just try it. If you think it's gonna bother you too much, then you can delete it afterwards. Ouch! A contestant just got eliminated and lost a fortune. Stop. That's a deposit. Next game we have on the list is Fortnite. We're going to be playing this game at 1080p using the high settings. Fortnite does what it does best. It stutters on whatever card you play it with. The average FPS however is not bad. It is 78. You can definitely play this game as is. But if you really want more FPS then you can turn on TSR upscaling or you can run this game in performance mode which will give you a ton more FPS. You might even be able to get a high refresh rate experience that way. The final game we have on our list is Valorant. We are going to be playing at 1080p using mostly high settings. In Valorant, you should expect a pretty high number of FPS coming from the 1060 and it delivers. You get an average FPS of over 300 with 1% lows sitting above 250 and 0.1% lows sitting above 130 most of the time. That will also bring an end to our benchmark. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do let me know down below in the comments what you thought. And I'll catch you in the next one.